Hello, Potter fans, and welcome to Screen Rant. It is our humble opinion that there aren't any real duds in the Harry Potter movie franchise, but the films do have a varying quality to them, changing directors, an evolving cast, and certain books just being more popular than others all factor into it, and well, let's just get right to it. I'm Greg Elliott, and here are all the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts movies ranked worst to best. There's not an outright bad film in the series, but if there is one to avoid, like a vomit-flavored Bertie Botts bean, for us, that's the second Fantastic Beast film, The Crimes of Grindelwald. It has its moments, but ultimately it tries a little too hard to build out the Fantastic Beast franchise and does some things with some of the characters that we don't particularly like, but up to three additional films are already in the pipeline, so make of that what you will. Number 9 is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which does have some great bits like Harry and Ron's flying car being mauled by the Whomping Willow and the appearance of young Tom Riddle, but without the sense of newness that the first film had, Chamber of Secrets is kind of forgettable and lacks the oomph that would come later in the franchise. And on to number 8 is a film that sort of, kind of, maybe didn't need to exist. Adapting The Deathly Hallows, the final Harry Potter book for the big screen, presented a big problem. One film wasn't enough to really do it justice, but there wasn't really enough material for two full feature-length movies, but that's what they did anyways, and by having to stretch half of a book into a whole movie, the film is basically one long tedious setup with pretty much no payoff. Number 7 is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Now, why they thought making the longest Harry Potter book into, at the time, the shortest movie was a good idea, we have no idea. But to give it credit, nothing feels missing from the film, but it might be the most divisive in the series as this is when the movie shifted to a more serious tone, which was a necessary part of the story, but unfortunately, not one of the most entertaining. And number six brings us back to Fantastic Beasts number one. Fans were pretty skeptical about non-Harry Potter stories, but the movie actually turned out to be a nice surprise. It was fun and bright and expanded the Potterverse in a good way without having to get all dark and dangerous like the later Potter films. The halfway point for us is the first Harry Potter film, The Sorcerer's Stone, or Philosopher's Stone for you folks in the UK. Now, it doesn't have Oscar caliber acting, the kids were all brand new after all, but it did establish the tone, the characters, and the visuals of the entire series. The later films might be more polished and tell stronger stories, but you have to give The Sorcerer's Stone credit for building the world on screen. Number four is Harry Potter number six, The Half-Blood Prince, which is where the Harry Potter endgame really started to take shape, with the introduction of Horcruxes and the start of Harry's quest to defeat Voldemort once and for all. It's got the traditional Hogwarts-based antics, teenage drama, and some big story moments, and Dumbledore's death was just as devastating on screen as it was in the book. Okay, down to the final three. The Deathly Hallows Part 1 was weighed down by exposition and setup. Part 2 was the total opposite of that. The Battle of Hogwarts and Harry's final duel with Voldemort were epic, and Snape's death might have been even more crushing than Dumbledore's. Now, Part 2 probably wouldn't have had such an impact if Part 1 hadn't taken one for the team, but it's still a solid film that feels like a genuine, deserved ending to the story. Number two, as in the book, a lot of stuff happens in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Voldemort's resurrection, Cedric Diggory, the Yule Ball, the Triwizard Tournament, the Quidditch World Cup. It's got so many of the franchise's most recognized and referenced moments and kind of feels like the end of Harry's phase one, so to speak, bringing everything from the first three films together and setting up the bigger battle to come. And our number one Harry Potter film is The Prisoner of Azkaban. Based off what's probably the best of the books, all three kids had really grown as characters and actors by this point, and director Alfonso Cuaron really got creative, giving the film some of the series' best visuals and even some good scares. And come on, you can't go wrong bringing Gary Oldman into anything. And quick as a snitch, we're done. Check out our write-up in the video description for a more in-depth rundown of our rankings, and keep coming back to Screen Rent for more TV and movie talk. I'm Greg Elliott, and I'm out. Peace.